So today is a super rainy, super miserable day. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to shoot a review on the Insta One uh, X2 that you've probably seen floating around on my feed. Uh, Insta360 reached out to me about a month and a half ago now and said, uh, would I like to try out the Insta360 One X2? And to be honest, I wasn't as excited as I should have been in hindsight now. This camera is amazing and I'm going to do a bit of an in-depth review for you. So let's get into it. So when I first got this camera, my main experience with action cameras on the bike had been a GoPro uh, Hero White, I think it was the 7 uh, that I had. I'd taken a little bit of footage on it, um, but admittedly not a whole heap because I wasn't really impressed with uh, the angles and the footage that was coming out of the camera. And in hindsight, with uh, having used the Insta360 now, I can completely understand why uh, I wasn't loving that camera. So I've been using this for a lot of different footage and angles on the bike, and I am really, really loving it. There's a couple of things that I want to point out later on in the video that aren't great. Um, as always, these, these reviews are always honest, so as much as I'm super grateful that Insta360 sent me this, I want to make sure that I'm doing an honest review and just pointing out a few things to watch out for with it. But all in all, honestly, I would still go out and buy this camera um, if you're looking at an action camera for your bike. So initially when Insta360 sent the camera out, they sent me a whole bunch of accessories as well. And I did start to do a review on all the bits and pieces that I got. But I thought maybe for this video, I'll just talk about the stuff that I'm using pretty much every time I throw this on my bike. That way you kind of understand what I'm using, how I'm using it, and maybe what your setup should be initially, depending on what you're trying to shoot. So I always have the camera, obviously. You need a memory card. Uh, the battery comes included, but you can get backup batteries as well. But I've found that the battery life's pretty good and lasts just fine. So I, um, I got this little silicon uh, camera protector that came in my little bundle. I would definitely invest in one of these. There is sort of a wetsuity material case that, that um, I think it came in the camera box. Um, but this one is worth the investment. This is a separate accessory and I would definitely go out and, and buy this one. I kind of store it with the little silicon protector on the top and then I kind of store it on the selfie stick like that. It's kind of an easy way to store it, but definitely invest in the silicon cover. It's the, the best by far. Then I have the ram mount as well, which is um, like a ram mount. It's a typical sort of ball mount so you adjust it here with the adjustment of, of these two here and then that just kind of clips straight onto your handlebars. I've left this on my bike to make it easy to basically reposition and then throw the selfie stick with the camera on top as well. So then that leads me into the selfie stick as well. This is the other main accessory that I've used um, with the Insta360 pretty much every time. This gives you some pretty amazing angles on the bike and we can talk a little bit about that later. But yeah, they're kind of the main accessories that I've been using every single time uh, I throw this on the bike. The one thing that I really love about the Insta360 as compared to the original GoPro that I had is that you don't have to think about the angle when you put this on the bike. So a lot of the problems with GoPros, especially when they're basically a single um, point of filming, is that you really, really have to think about the angles you want and the type of scenery that you're trying to capture when you go out and ride. And that also means that you kind of have to pull over, readjust, or kind of think about the next shot, and it can be a little bit disruptive to the riding experience. The thing I really loved about uh, the... One X2 is that I could pretty much 
put it on the bike and if I wanted to just set and forget I could do that. If I wanted to have a bit of a play around and, and be a little bit creative with shots I could do that as well but this thing will capture the full 360 view of um, your surroundings basically from where it's mounted and that's pretty awesome when you just want to be in the moment and ride but still capture um, the landscape or, or the you know the group that you're riding with or whatever so that was the first thing I really really loved about it. The second thing was the editing experience then when you get into the software. So I've been editing on my phone. Um, there is a desktop version, but to be honest, the phone editing experience is, is second to none. It's, it's great. It's as good as a lot of the Adobe suite. I found it really intuitive and that's obviously a big part of uh, what the company is investing in is not just the camera, but the ability to reframe and reposition those shots so that you can get really creative with with the angles and, and the composition. So it connects by Bluetooth. It's been really simple to connect. I haven't had any issues with the connection dropping out or kind of being a bit weird. Um, I say that because with my Canon, sometimes the uh, software that I connect my phone um, with to my camera can be a little bit temperamental, but I found the Insta360 to be great. So you basically can go in, reframe your shots, kind of, edit in there and then I basically download those and I might throw them onto the computer to do a, a larger edit or they can go straight onto Instagram or wherever you want to put them up. So the software, super easy to use, really easy to navigate so I wouldn't be uh, too worried about that when uh, you're thinking about you know how you're going to edit and what post is going to look like with this camera. Uh, the quality and the, and the build has been really awesome. Um, the screen's super durable. Um, you can get lens protectors uh, for these lenses. I haven't put mine on yet, but I probably should do that pretty soon. I'm pretty diligent with the, uh, the slip, but um, just to protect the camera, because obviously this is, you know, this is the, the main thing that, that shoots the angles. Um, I should protect those, but I really can't complain about the build quality. They're super waterproof. I haven't had to um, shoot in the rain yet, but they're completely waterproof. The housing's sealed, so you don't have to worry about the batteries. So that's awesome. Visibility on the bike in terms of the little light here so that you know when it's uh, recording and when it's not has been awesome. Um, that's I've been able to look at that at pretty much any angle on the bike and see that it's either recording or it's turned off for some reason. Um, so that's that's been really great. The little screen's super intuitive, so it's got a lot of sort of sliding gestures and you can get into different settings and, and things like that far easier than the GoPro. I found the GoPro to be a little bit clunky and I quite like the interface with this. Um, if, if you have a chance, probably get a um, RAM mount that is uh, a proper RAM mount. This came from 360. I'm not sure if it's their, uh, their own product or if it's um, maybe a, an affiliate. Um, brand. I have found that because of the angles that I've been uh, kind of mounting the camera at, the the RAM mount, the I guess coating is coming loose a little bit because I've really been cranking this as tight as it can be. So there is a little bit of wear there, but all in all, it's still in pretty good shape. But I'd say the official RAM mounts are, are probably a, a little bit more quality, but definitely invest in a mount like this because it's going to be uh, really versatile when you're putting it on the bike. The selfie stick has been great though. Um, no complaints there. Really good quality, um, obviously made by Insta360 themselves. So this has been brilliant and definitely worth it. Whether you're getting it for the bike or whether you use it when you get off the bike, this is definitely one of those um, accessories that you want. Having that little bit of extra reach is really handy. I went for a hike with mine and I was able to kind of get some really nice shots um, out over um, a forest and also kind of up in the trees as well. So this is really nice. Um, so one point I do want to point out that um, 
I've kind of had a little bit of trouble with um, recently and it's only happened once so it could just be a bit of a, a funny thing um, could be to do with software or something like that but I have noticed recently in 5.7k when I was writing the other day um, the camera was turning off in small increments so I'd kind of get to film for about 10 minutes and then it'd switch off I dropped it back down to 4k and it shot fine for about half an hour on another ride so I think it has something to do with the speed of the card I'm probably going to update my card these take a micro SD they say go for a V30 quality card but I think I'm going to bump it up to a V60 quality just to see if the speed of the cards are a little bit better I think it has something to do with the movement in the video so just keep that in mind uh, I'd, I'd go a high quality card when you purchase it um, but if you do go for a more mid-range card probably 4k is what you can get away with on the bike um, you can stay you can take stills on this there is a remote that comes with it I haven't had a chance to have a look at that though I'd love it I think it'd be pretty cool to kind of have that in your pocket or uh, maybe mounted on your handlebars as well especially if you kind of put the pole up a little bit higher on your bike to get some of those cool shots and you more want to get stills rather than footage the quality is crazy and that issue that I talked about with the card it's only just started happening and I've been shooting mainly in 5.7k so it's the quality is just phenomenal um, and especially with still images I think that uh, the V30 card would be fine at 5.7k with still images but um, yeah that remote would be awesome to have with this just to give you a little bit of um, I guess a little bit more flexibility when kind of having um, having to shoot stills with it on the bike that would be that would be a, a decent investment I think as well other than that um, that pretty much covers it I've, I've really loved having it it's so easy to throw onto the bike and just shoot and shoot b-roll and just shoot inter interesting landscapes um, one of my tips, I'll probably do uh, a separate video um, in terms of like how you shoot um, and what to shoot, but one of my tips would be if you're trying to shoot less of you riding and more of the landscape around you, the higher you can get the camera, the better. Obviously, you have to be careful of wind uh, and the road conditions around you as well. But if you're on a quiet road and you can throw the camera up really high, that makes for some beautiful shots. Um, and so I'm really keen to, to get a few more of those in. If you've got an Insta360 uh, or if you've got something else that you think is comparable, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of keen to hear what you think or if you're looking at getting one of these. I do have an affiliate link which I'll drop below as well. So if you uh, feel like supporting me and you feel like grabbing um, one of the Insta360s using that would be amazing and I'd thank you for it. Uh, but otherwise, let me know what you think. And as always, stay friendly, ride daily, and I'll see you next time.